Okay, we are live. Oh, and I can still share my screen. Perfect. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. I'm using StreamYard again. So um, just make sure that I think there are instructions above this post. So if you want me to be able to see you commenting and who's commenting, then you have to grant StreamYard permission to access your profile. If you don't want to do that, I think I can still do it because I have my phone open right next to me and I can see the comments. I think we're going to try this out. So welcome to the Live at Five. This is Minding Your Soul's weekly training where I jump on here every week and I give you a training on what I did, all different, all the different things of what I did to heal myself from MS so that you don't have to be sick because you do have choices. And if I could do it as a single parent with little to no money, I feel like everyone can do it. So what I did was I simplified it into a protocol. And that's what we talk about in this group. And every Wednesday I go live to give you a piece of the puzzle so that you can put it all together and begin healing yourself right away. Rhonda, well, hello there. It's good to see you. Thank you for registering with StreamYard because now I can see who's commenting. That's perfect. Okay. Today is a great, well, I say this all the time, but I, I love all the topics that we're talking about. The reason why I want I felt in, that it was important to do today's topic today is because I'm going to be going out. Um, I'm going to be delivering. I'm eight months pregnant. So I'm going to be delivering sometime in early March, maybe late February. And we've had a lot of new people in the group. So I want to make sure that everyone is aware of what to eat, what not to eat, and they have a reference to go back to. You know, this video will always be there. So I might be a little, a little quiet in, in March till we get this little guy sleeping, um, but I'll still be around and I'll, we'll have all the videos too. So if you're jumping on here, say hello. Let me know that you're here. Um, if you have any questions while I'm talking, don't worry about, um, don't wait till the ends. Just, just type them and I'll periodically check in on them so I don't miss anything. Um, well, I have some announcements at the end. I'll go through them, but just, I don't want to delay the information in the files section of the minding your soul group. I put a calendar with all the events that are going on. I am only up to January. I didn't do February yet, but January there's some freebies. So there's going to be a free clearing this weekend. If you want to register for that, Catherine only does that. Actually, I don't know if she's ever done it before, but she said she's going to do it once or twice a year. So if you've been meaning to try a clearing, because we have our own MS group clearing, um, and that is all, that's also on the fourth Sunday of every month. Um, forgive me. I've been out of breath all day today for no reason other than I'm pregnant. Um, so the free clearing is going to happen this Sunday at four o'clock Eastern Standard Time, whereas the MS one is two o'clock. The MS one you pay for, the free one, obviously it's free. So if you've been meaning to try it to see what it's about, um, do the free one. Take advantage of it because I don't know when she's or when or if she's going to do it again. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to share my screen because I want you to simplify the process for everybody because it's a lot. We go grocery shopping and we're overwhelmed with all the decisions that we already have going on in our lives, right? And then we have to read labels and can I eat this? Am I feeding the virus? What's good for me? What's not good for me? And it's so easy to just go, oh, screw it. I can't do this because there's so much already going on in our minds. So I wanted to simplify. Shauna, I'm so glad you're on here. Hello, she says hello from Canada. Hello from New Jersey. Um, I have your comments written in my notes right here. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about the alternatives, um, the whole sugar-free thing and the alternatives to baking. So that's right down here, I'm up here. <laughs> so just give me a couple minutes, I'm so glad you're on. Um, and Mary, hello to you too. All right, so I figured out, I think I figured out how to share my screen. And I wanna go through this simplified red, yellow, green strategy that I came up for understanding what to eat, what not to eat. I'm not gonna give you exactly what to eat and what not to eat because that's, that's your choice. And plus when we're in this group, we have people from all over the world. Certain foods, certain brands might not be available to everyone. So I give you the guidelines so that you know you can take this food and go, oh, oh, right. Okay, so it's gluten-free, it's dairy-free, it's egg-free. Is this going to be a green, a red, or a yellow? We're going to go over that right now. So sharing my screen. And 
Oh, oh, I did it. I did it. All right. It's in Canva. And let me do full size. And I'm just over here checking my phone to make sure that everyone can. Okay, perfect. It's on. I can see it. Very good. All right. So first thing you want to look at, and I'm going to upload this into the files section. Let me write that down. Files. And I'll call it, um, you know what I'll call it? Red, yellow, green what to eat or something like that, but it'll be in the file section. All right. So right here at the top, you have foods that feed the virus, gluten, dairy, eggs, heavy metals. This is what we talk about in the group all the time. Gluten feeds the virus, dairy, eggs, heavy metals. You can control the gluten, the dairy, and the eggs that go into your body. You cannot control well, to an extent, for the most part, you can't control the heavy metals that go into your body because heavy metals are all over the place. They're in the air, they're in the pots and pans that we use, they're in our drinking water. But what we can control is the foods that we put inside of our body that are going to release the heavy metals. And we all know the heavy metal detox smoothie, that's what we're all drinking to get those heavy metals out because gluten, dairy, eggs feed the virus so do heavy metals. So all of them need to be avoided or taken out. Now, foods that don't feed the virus. There's a whole ton of other foods that don't feed the virus, right? A ton of other foods. Just know gluten, dairy, eggs, heavy metals all feed the virus, but what about everything else? So if you look down here, I've put them into green for healing, yellow for neutral, red for inflammatory. We're going to start with the green. The green are the healing foods. We pretty much know what foods are healing. The fruit, the vegetables, the healthy fats um, and oils and protein. We all know those are good foods to eat. When I talk about healthy fats, I know there's a lot of diets out there. Maybe not a lot. I think it's the best bet diet that says to stay away from fats um, I follow the medical medium. I follow what's worked for me, what's worked for my clients. And I believe that fat is absolutely necessary. So I've never stayed away from fats. However, um, you don't want that being the bulk of your diet. You want the bulk of your diet being up here, fruits and vegetables. Um, and then you want to do a little supplementing with the fats and the oils and the protein. Now, over here are, I think I put... Rancid oils. Okay, I did. I'm sorry. I was just checking. I put rancid oils over here under inflammatory because the healthy fats are the um, coconut oil. Um, why isn't it coming to me? The coconut oil, the olive oil, those really good, stable, um, long chain fatty acids. So where we fall into some questions are the neutral foods, which are the processed foods. And even though the processed foods are gluten-free, dairy-free, and egg-free. They're still processed. They're still not going to do anything to feed the virus, right? So they're not going to hurt you. They're neutral. They're not going to heal you. They're not going to hurt you. They're kind of like filler. And these are what I call the, the comfort foods that we all, we all need from time to time. We all need the gluten-free bread. We all need the gluten-free, um, let's say, coffee cake, cereals. It's not something that we eat every day, all day, but it is stuff that we eat that we need because sometimes you just need your comfort foods. And that's what I teach on Thursdays on the gluten-free um, cooking demo or baking demo. I show you how to eat your comfort foods, the foods that you love, and still be gluten-free, dairy-free, and egg-free. So in this diet, in this protocol, I should say, we're not talking about foods that, it, it's not a diet, it's not stay away from this. It's like, hey, what do you want to eat, and how can we make it a healthy, good-tasting version? I can't help you out if you want McDonald's. I really don't have an alternative to that. <laughs> um, I just posted something today about the McDonald's food, not not decaying or molding after 24 years is TikTok. It's like, it's like 60 seconds, like scroll back and watch that. It's pretty interesting. All right. So those are the neutral foods. You want to sprinkle them in your, in your, in your eating, you know, like sprinkle them throughout the week. I do inflammatory. So we have the green healing, the yellow neutral, and then we have the inflammatory. These are the foods that 
you, you do want to stay away from, but sometimes you can't. And I don't want you to think that they're feeding the virus and that they're going to set you back. And we're going to talk in a couple of minutes about what that means, setting you back. What does that actually mean? So we're going to get to that in a second. Inflammatory foods are going to be your rancid oils. They're going to be like your soy oil, sunflower, safflower, palm oil, not to be confused with palm kernel oil. That's the good stuff. Um, MSG and all the ways they hide the name for MSG. Artificial colors and sweeteners, alcohol. These things are highly inflammatory. When you're trying to heal your symptoms, you don't want to be eating these foods. But if you do, if something happens where, oh my goodness, I just ate something with an artificial color in it, you know, I, I didn't want to, but I didn't know. It's okay because it doesn't feed the virus. You can bring that inflammation down by just going right back to your healing foods. So artificial sweeteners, whether you have MS or not, you shouldn't be eating those. I tell my kids to avoid them like the plague. Artificial sweeteners, artificial colors, and anything hydrogenated. Hydro hydrogenation is the process of turning food into almost like a plastic our bodies don't recognize it. It's completely toxic. And we've talked about free radicals before and what they do to the body. Avoid artificial colors and sweeteners like the plague, especially sweeteners. The sweeteners, um, aspartame, sucralose, anything diet has aspartame or sucralose. Read your ingredients because those things essentially in a nutshell cause black holes in your brain. And the signals don't go to where they're where they need to go because they get stuck. They can't jump over the black hole that was just created by that artificial sweetener. When we're trying to heal, especially from MS, we want our signals firing and being able to follow the path and get from our brain to our arms, to our legs without interruption. Those artificial sweeteners are setting you back. Alcohol. I still drink alcohol. I mean, I haven't since I started trying to get pregnant a year ago. <laughs> I started the IVF drugs in January of 2021. I feel like I've been pregnant now for exactly a year and I still have to go until March. But anyway, when I'm not pregnant or trying to get pregnant or nursing, I do have a glass of wine. Um, when, they, when people ask me, do I drink alcohol? I always say yes. I, I don't drink a lot of I don't drink anything besides red wine. I feel like, yeah, it's still inflammatory. It's not the best, but I feel like it's the um, the lesser of the evils. So I don't do it all the time. I'll do it on the weekends. I'll have a glass and I'll usually open a bottle Friday night. And by Sunday, if there's any left at all, there's a very little bit. I'll have a glass Friday, Saturday and Sunday night. Um, but other than that, no, I try to stay away from Really, I do stay away from all al alcohol, except when I go to my mother's and my brother's there and he used to be a bartender and he makes the best mixed drinks. So a couple times a year, usually in the summer, I will partake, but just do your reading. Make sure whatever you're drinking is gluten-free. I won't spend too much time on that, but this is going to be in the file section. So when you're reading something, and that's what we should be doing all the time is reading the ingredient statements of what's going in our, in our, in our mouths. Always look at the ingredient statement all the way down and you go, oh, okay, this stuff isn't bad. I can, I can read all this stuff. I know what it is. Does it fall into healing, neutral, or inflammatory? If it's healing, great. Eat a ton of it. If it's neutral, sprinkle it in. If it's inflammatory, use your best judgment. Don't eat that very often. You don't want to when you're trying to heal. You want to bring inflammation down so that chemical processes and um, electrical currents and everything happens the way it's supposed to. All right, so here's your guide. So now I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Oh, look how seamless this is. So now I'm going to go back to me. I did it. Okay. I swear it's taken me like a year to figure out how to share my screen. Um, all right. Now I can see the comments again. Again, Hello, Mary. Hello, Jamal. Thanks for joining us today. Um, all right. So let's go to some questions because in the group this week, there was a lot of good questions. Where do I start is the first one. Where do you start? Go to the guide that we just went over. Start in the files section, go to that guide and learn how to read ingredient statements. Um, you really shouldn't be eating too many foods that have big ingredient statements anyway. You want to be eating good foods, natural foods, and that's mainly fruits, vegetables, a clean protein, some good fats and oils. And what I want to say to everybody is do not do this all at once. You can't. It's going to overwhelm you and it's going to... Um, 
make you not want to do this anymore. Okay. You do this little by little. And what you want to do is have your wins every week. So maybe you go through your pantry and you, you find an item and you're like, oh, oh, this has gluten in it. All right, this week, let me find something to replace this. And, you know, maybe it's your pasta. You need to replace it. Little by little, chunk it down. This isn't a race. This is a process. It's an evolution. And you will evolve into this person. But if you try to tackle this all at once, it, it's not going to work. Motivation runs out and we get overwhelmed and then we stop altogether. And then who does that help? Nobody. So that's where you start slowly. Okay, now getting into the specifics. Um, wait, Rhonda has a question. If you have stopped eating artificial sweeteners and then accidentally eat or drink something with it, you will know right away. Symptoms will rear their ugly heads. It happened to me. Rhonda, thank you for that testimonial because you're absolutely right. Even if foods like the artificial sweeteners don't feed the virus, what they do inside the body, whether it's inflammation or whatever it's doing, you're going to feel it right away. Um, again, oh, we wanted to talk about being set back. We're going to get there. You're going to feel it right away. So Rhonda brings up a really good point. Even if you cut these foods out and then you bring them back, you still have to listen to your body. You still, your body will still tell you what to eat and what not to eat. You know what feeds the virus. You don't want to feed the virus because that's what we need to get out of our bodies to get rid of all of the MS symptoms. But even when I got rid of my MS symptoms, I still couldn't eat things like popcorn. My God, popcorn. I would eat popcorn and I would blow up and it would take me a couple days to recover from that. Now, does popcorn feed the virus? No, but it inflames the shit out of my body so I couldn't eat it. So what's good for you might not be good for somebody else. Okay. So when we're in the group, I love how everyone is so supportive and they're going, all right, well, listen, this doesn't feed the virus, but I still can't eat this because this is what it does to me. So when we talk about being set back, um, and if you don't know anything about the Epstein-Barr virus and what virus we're talking about, go to my earlier videos. Most of them are labeled um, the Epstein-Barr connection or MS and EBV. Go watch one of those and it will tell you all about the different stages of the Epstein-Barr virus and why we stay away from it. We as people who have been diagnosed with MS. So when you feed the virus, the virus itself has a six week life cycle. So we're trying to always starve, kill and detox the virus out of our body every day through the foods that we eat. We wanna starve the virus so that we weaken it. We wanna make our immune system super strong with the foods that we eat so that it can kill the weakened virus. And then we detox it with the lemon juice and um, <clears throat> lemon water and the celery juice. We detox it out every day. So the virus, we starve it, we take the immune system, we kill it, and then we detox it out of our bodies every single day with the foods that we eat. Very important. Now, what happens when you eat gluten? I have coined the phrase, I've glutenized myself. I don't know if glutenized is a word, I don't think it is. But what happens when you eat gluten? What happens when you eat dairy, eggs? You feed the virus, okay? I don't know if the virus has ever gone inside anyone's body. I know I still get symptoms if I were to eat gluten. Um, it used to take me down for months. Last time I ate gluten, I got a rash on my skin and that's it. Um, so, But then again, it was only three potato chips. So I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I will live the rest of my life as if I am starving, killing, and detoxing the virus out of me because it's no big deal anymore. It's just the way I eat. It's the way my kids eat. It's the way my new husband eats. And he loves it. We eat really well around here. So when you accidentally eat something like the gluten, dairy, eggs, something that feeds the virus, the virus goes, ooh, food. And it comes to life and it starts proliferating. What does pro pro proliferate mean? It's a very fancy word for it. Multiply rapidly. It multiplies rapidly. When it starts to multiply, that's when you get symptoms. And because the Epstein-Barr virus has a six week life cycle, you are now dealing with the virus for the next six weeks. You could, depending on how your body reacts, have symptoms for six to eight to nine to 10 weeks. And the reason is you're gonna say, well, Jean, you just said the, the virus only lives for six weeks. So why are you saying I'm gonna have symptoms for even longer? 
because once the virus dies, it has to leave your body. The dead corpse of the virus is a neurotoxin and it can be a dermatoxin. It can still cause you symptoms, even though it's dead, and it's but it's still inside your body. It will still cause you symptoms. So when you eat something as powerful as gluten, because gluten feeds it something fierce, it's going to feed the virus. The virus is going to awaken, and then it's going to wreak havoc in your body and cause you symptoms. There's a whole video on that, EBV connection, MS connection, past videos. Um, go watch them if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about. So it has been my experience that the gluten feeds the virus more so than the dairy or the eggs. I have accidentally eaten dairy. I have actually um, didn't know about dairy and eggs until the Anthony Williams released his first book in 2015. I started healing myself in 2004, 2004. And I didn't know about the eggs. I didn't know about the heavy metals and I didn't know about the dairy, but I knew that gluten made me so much worse. To this day, I cannot go anywhere near gluten, but if I were to have something accidentally with eggs in it or dairy in it, it does not cause me symptoms. My theory is because it doesn't feed the virus as viciously as gluten does. Now that's where I'm at today, right? I've been at this now 10 years. It's not going to take you 10 years, thank God, because all that information is already out there now. Now there are protocols everywhere for you to follow to get rid of your symptoms. Um, but I want you to know that when you're healing your symptoms, when you're going balls to the wall and you're like, that's it, these symptoms have to go, that's when you want to stay away from not only the gluten, but the eggs and the dairy and the heavy metal. You want to get them out. You want to do that religiously. And do it for three months and watch what happens. Today, when people are healed, I say you still, you absolutely still have to avoid gluten. I know how much gluten feeds the virus, but stay away from the dairy and the eggs. But someone said, well, what if I accidentally ate something with eggs in it? How would, would that set me back as much? I don't think so. It has been my experience with me, with my clients that accidentally eating eggs and dairy, it will inflame their bodies and they'll feel it, whether they feel like um, they're moving in molasses, whether they feel aches and pains in their legs or their joints. Something always happens, but it doesn't set them back for six to eight weeks, nine, 10, 11 weeks. It doesn't set them back like that. So that's why avoid gluten like the freaking plague and try to avoid dairy and eggs. Um, and, and if you end up eating some, I, I don't think, like I said, from my experience, from my client's experience, that it's as bad as eating gluten. Um, okay, so next I wanted to, okay, so a couple specifics on the diet. Are potatoes bad? No, potatoes are amazing. I want you to Google medical medium potatoes and read what he writes on them. Potatoes, even white potatoes I'm talking about, have been given such a bad reputation because it's a white food. And I don't know why, but the health industry is like, oh, white foods aren't good for you. They're actually extremely um, healing. You can mono eat them to heal if you need to, if you're stuck in bed and you need to um, heal your gut you can mono eat potatoes. That's how good they are for you. And I could do a whole video on the healing benefits of potatoes. Just Google it. Medical medium potatoes. It's amazing. Um, sweet potatoes. Yes. White potatoes. Yes. They're so good for you. Beans. Now, a bean or legumes. There's a lot of theories out there. I'm going to lower my heater. Hold on a second. There is a lot of theories out there about uh, lectins, lectins found in legumes, in, in beans, being inflammatory and bad for you. Mm. Oh, hello, Suzanne. It's nice to see you on here. And Shauna, what about potatoes being known as nightshades or other nightshades? Okay, perfect. Let's go back to that for a second. That's a theory, just like with the lectins. It's just a theory. It's never been proven. And according to Anthony Williams, which you guys know the reason why I follow him so closely and why I use a lot of his information in my protocol openly, I, I don't take anything on as my own. All of this information I have found either from the medical medium or bits and pieces that I've grabbed. But it's just a theory. I never stayed away from nightshades, nor have any of my clients. I had advised them not to because there are so many healing benefits to these foods. Now, that being said, beans are, 
inside the body, when you consume something that gives you gas, when you consume something that upsets your stomach, it doesn't always mean that it's bad for you. Most of the time, what it means is that it's killing a bacteria inside your body. That bacteria dying, that die off from that bacteria is actually what's causing those symptoms. It's not that the food itself is bad. The food itself is actually killing a specific bacteria inside your body. And so I don't want anyone getting off nightshades. I don't want anyone staying away from lectins, but I want you to listen to your body. If beans are bothering you, even after you cook them, because cooked beans, you're supposed to release the lectins from it. If they still bother you, get rid of them, take them out of your diet, and then slowly reintroduce them back because anything from nature, excuse me, this kombucha, <laughs> um, carbonated. So anything from nature is, is going to be good for you. It's going to be healing for you. Whether or not it's going to agree with your um, gut biome, with the bacteria, good or bad inside your body, it, it's all dependent on you. So that's why everything is a trial and error. So yeah, nightshades, lectins, I recommend that we eat all of them and then we see how we feel. And if they're bad, get rid of them for a while and then reintroduce them in. Now, somebody, um, it says Facebook user. It doesn't actually tell me. Oh, my volume. Sorry. I just want to check on my phone because on StreamYard, it says Facebook user. Oh, it's Angelica. Hello. All right. Let's see what she says. Um, I've been juicing for over a year, still not symptom free, but better this week. I feel like, um, herxing or getting worse. I'm gluten, dairy, and egg free these past two weeks. I've been, um, why can't I scroll down? I'm going to show it actually. Perfect. These past two weeks, I've changed up my diet. Absolutely. No potatoes, legumes, high sugar fruit. I have reactions to them and feel it after I eat them. Every time I have a heavy metal detox smoothie, my old system symptoms flare like crazy. What could be going on? Maybe the sugar. Do you see how, how do I get rid of this? Angelica, that, oh, perfect right there. Um, Angelica, that's perfect. This is all trial and error and we're constantly our own guinea pigs. So I've heard a lot of people say, when I drink the heavy metal detox smoothie, my symptoms flare again. There's a lot of heavy metals to detox from our body, and it does take years. And a lot of times when we drink the heavy metal smoothie, we get, we get shit moving. Heavy metals are moving from place to place and they're getting out. And the process of getting out is also going to cause some symptoms and get them worse. So what I would say is back that off a little bit, make half the recipe and see where you can drink it out. What amount that you can drink that you're not going to see symptoms every day, um, little by little. So if, if the whole recipe, which makes a lot is too big, which it probably is, do half, do a quarter, but do a little bit every day. Even if you want to make the whole thing, right? Make a whole bunch, stick it in the freezer in like ice cube trays, and then just take a few of those every day so that you're getting those ingredients in and the heavy metals are moving out much more slowly because they think the moving of it, um, the moving of the heavy metals, now it's a different location in your body. It's causing those symptoms. As far as... Um, what did you say? The fruits. I would change things up a little bit, even though fruit sugar is not bad for us. It can be bad for some, depending on what's going on in the body. Only you are going to know that. So that's why I'm, I was always constantly changing things up and being my own guinea pig and trying different, different combinations and eliminating things and bringing them back. You might need more fats in your diet. You might need more protein in your diet. I would encourage you because Angelica, we haven't talked in a while and don't even, you don't even have to go through my um, consultation thing. Just send me a text and let's schedule some time to talk about it. And let's just like brainstorm. Let's go through what you've been eating um, and where we can maybe add some things. So I encourage you to do that. I'd love to go through that with you. And, and thanks for putting that on here because that's an excellent, excellent example. All right. Natalie says, hi, is something like goat's milk cheese considered dairy, even though it's not from a cow? Excellent question. It's a different kind of dairy. Um, as far as the molecular structure, it is going to act differently inside of our bodies, but it is still dairy. 
and it is still going to feed the virus. So depending on what symptoms that you have, if you're going aggressive and trying to get rid of your symptoms, eliminate that for a couple months, eliminate everything for a couple months. And then if you want to slowly reintroduce goat's milk and see what it does, then do it that way. But do it all for, for three months because it's going to take your body that long. Um, it's going to take you that long to see the real effects. Three months. Um, you could do it. You could totally do it. There's so many alternatives out there. And Mary says, I cannot have high fructose in sugar either. Makes my leg spasm. Perfect. So this is what, thank you, Mary, for saying that. So this is where you guys are going to determine what you can have and what you can't, whether or not it feeds the virus. Even if there's this whole chunk of food over here that doesn't feed the virus, that doesn't mean that it's going to be good for your body. So that's what I love about the support that I see everyone giving in this group is that everyone knows, listen, we're, we're trying not to feed the virus, but things are different for everybody, which is why not one protocol can work for everybody. I can give you guidelines. You stay within those guidelines for what you're going to eat. But within those guidelines, you're going to be eliminating things and adding things back and being your own kind of research and development guru for your body because everyone is different. The bacteria, the heavy metals, the combination of all of those things is like a fingerprint. Everyone has a different combination of it. So excellent questions. Keep them coming. I'm going to move right along to, okay, one of the questions was, is eating gluten-free expensive? Well... It can be, but it shouldn't be. Because if eating gluten-free is expensive, if you think it's expensive, then you're, you're just doing too many processed foods. When I had first started going gluten-free, I was a single parent, two kids, um, and no money. Like no money, like no money. Any money that I did have went to the kids. And when I tell you no money, like there was no child support, there's no alimony. There was just Janine hustling out there trying to make a buck and trying to send two kids to school in nice clothes. If I could do it, anyone can do it. I knew that I had to eat anyway. I knew I had to go grocery shopping. So that money I was going to spend on my health. And that meant I was going to spend it in the grocery store. Fruits, vegetables. If you're eating a ton of meat, you shouldn't. It's inflammatory. You should be eating the grass-fed meat. Grass-fed meat, you eat that once a week and you eat a very little bit of it. Um, fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, quinoa, um, quinoa, which by the way, is the only plant-based complete protein. All of these healing foods, they're not expensive. When you eat a couple ingredients at a time, it's not expensive. It's when you want to go buy the loaves of gluten-free bread, the so delicious ice cream that I absolutely love now that I could afford now. Um, I could never afford that stuff before, so I didn't eat it. What did I do? I froze my fruit that was, you know, starting to go. I would freeze my fruit and I would stick it in the blender with some coconut milk and maybe some um, maple syrup. And even that was expensive. I didn't even have a lot of that. Going gluten-free should not be expensive. Um, if it is, it means that you're eating a lot of the processed gluten-free foods, which really are expensive. I mean, look at the look at the regular pasta compared to the gluten-free pasta. It's ridiculous. Or um, for gluten-free um, cupcakes from Whole Foods, we had birthdays a couple months ago. And I was like, oh, let me get some gluten-free cupcakes. I haven't bought them in a really long time. I went to Whole Foods. I'm like, oh my God, so much money. Totally bake those yourself. So there are ways to do it. Um, uh, it depends on what you buy. Gluten can be expensive. Exactly. It all depends on what you buy. If you're eating close to the ground, if you're eating fruits and vegetables and putting together your food, it's really, it's not expensive. I'm not even gonna say it's really not that expensive. It really isn't. It shouldn't be. Okay. Now there are two um, comments. So Pamela Roller, I'm not sure if I saw you on here. Um, if you are, say hello, let me know you're on here and I'm going to read Shauna's first. So Sean, I think we covered a little bit of this already. She said, I noticed that you don't specifically say sugar-free in my protocol. Um, can you give acceptable alternatives for cooking and baking? I love that you asked this question because it's a great segue to, um, in February, I'm going to be doing a free month of, what did I call it? Free in February. Um, all month long, every Thursday, I'm going to be doing a gluten-free baking demo. Normally, I do a gluten-free cooking demo on Thursday. Days for my private clients 
but I'm going to open it up to everybody in Minding Your Soul for the month of February because probably going to be kind of quiet in the month of March when this guy comes. So I wanted to give you guys something to um, really enjoy in February because honestly, I don't know where you live, but where I live in Jersey, it's dark, it's gray, it's cold all the time in February. And we have nothing to look forward to. We have Valentine's Day. Um, so that inspired me to show you guys how to bake. So no, sugar is not bad. It's inflammatory if you're going to eat the white processed sugar. Stay away from that. There are plenty of other sweetener options that you can use that actually taste a lot better than white sugar. Um, it's amazing. I bring my gluten-free, egg-free, dairy-free, uh, it's, it's completely vegan, um, coffee cake wherever I go to family events. And I don't even tell them. And I forgot where I shared this story, but my sister brought her new boyfriend over and we put out all the desserts inside the house and we're all sitting outside on the patio. So he comes out and he goes, who made this coffee cake? And I'm like, I got a little nervous, honestly, at first and I go, oh, that's mine. I made that wondering where this is going to go. And he goes, this is the best coffee cake I've ever eaten. I'm like, oh. And I was trying not to look surprised. I'm like, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I said, we haven't gotten a chance to talk much. I'm like, are you gluten-free or, or dairy-free? He's like, no, Christina eats like that. I don't. It's my sister, Christina. And I was like, oh, okay. Cause that is, and I told him, I'm like, that is completely gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free. He's like, are you kidding me? I said, no. And I'm telling you, I get that reaction every time I bring this coffee cake. So that's one of the things I'm going to be making in February, where I'm going to show you guys exactly because you know what? I don't bake from scratch. Who the hell has the time to bake from scratch? It's a mix, but what I do is I take the mix and I substitute the oil and the um, egg. And I'll tell you in a second coffee cake that's going to be Thursday the 3rd. I don't have any links up right now. Just email me if you want the Zoom link for those Thursdays. I'll start advertising in the group soon. I promise I was going to get, I was trying to get to it today. Um, but with my pregnancy brain, I showed up to my doctor's appointment an hour early. I've been doing that a lot lately. And I had to, um, anyway, it killed a good chunk of the day. So just email me, get healthy at mindingyoursoul.com. I'll send you the Zoom link. It's one link. It's all month long. So any Thursday you want to pop on at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I will be there. All right. So what was my point? All right. So even though I say sugar doesn't feed the virus, Sugar is very inflammatory, right? But we still need to sweeten things, don't we? I know I do. So what do I do? Well, for baking, I use a lot of maple syrup. I use maple syrup. I use monk fruit. I don't use stevia anymore because once you cook with stevia, I feel like it gives you a really weird taste. And what I use instead of anything dairy, I use a dairy-free sour cream or a dairy-free um, cream cheese. Now, dairy-free sour cream and, and cream cheese are disgusting. They're absolutely disgusting. They're close, but they don't taste anything like dairy. But what they do, what they did get right was the consistency. And that's what we're looking for when we're baking. We need to replace the consistency. And normally in baking, it calls for some kind of vegetable oil. And a lot of people will be like, oh, we'll just use coconut oil. I find that coconut oil especially when it gets cool. You know how it hardens when it gets cold and it liquefies when it's when it's warm. In baked goods, <clears throat> once the baked good is cooled, it's hard. It's like sandy. So instead of using the oil, any oil in your baked goods, use the dairy-free sour cream. And whatever it calls for, a fourth of a cup of oil, use a fourth of a cup of this uh, dairy um dairy-free sour cream or cream cheese. And the trick is to mix in some vanilla into the cream cheese or sour cream um, before you add it, okay? So now normally in baking, you would take the um, oil and the eggs and all the liquid stuff and you'd mix that together first. So instead of the eggs, you have two choices, chia or flax. I don't like chia all that much because it gives it kind of like a gritty feel to it, but I really do like flax. It doesn't make things as pretty because that coffee cake wasn't white. It had like brown specks in it. But if you can get past that, um, you take one tablespoon of ground flaxseed to three tablespoons of water and you mix it up and you give it like a minute. It's going to get like gelatinous, like, like an egg white. And that's what you're going to use. So the equivalent of one egg 
is a tablespoon of ground flaxseed with three tablespoons of water. Now I've tested this, I've let it sit for hours. It doesn't get any more gelatinous than it does in the first 10 minutes. So let it sit for 10 minutes. If you need three eggs, three tablespoons of ground flaxseed, and nine tablespoons of um, water. You mix it, let it sit, and then you can even put it in with the sour cream, mix that all together, and then in with your flour. I'm telling you, baked goods are delicious this way. All right, let me check the comments before I keep going, because I think, I think I might be done after this. I do want to talk about meds for a second. Okay, where was I? Um, <clears throat> Somebody agreed with me and said exactly that might be. Let me check my um, let me check my phone here. Oh, there's a lot I'm missing here. I'm so sorry. Okay, because see, I get off on a tangent and I start talking and I forget. Okay, so we talked about the high fructose. We talked about the goat's milk. Oh, hi, Keisha. How are you doing? Depends on what you buy gluten. It can be expensive. Oh, I didn't know you were the Facebook user. Okay, this is why I should just use my phone. Um Mary says earlier, when I was eating gluten bread, I was feeling the difference between the bread with the additives, which was highly inflammatory, and the ones without the additives. I've been gluten-free for a year and don't have any symptoms at all. Mary, I remember talking to you. You were one of the first people that I talked to back when I was in the accounting office. And I would tell my boss, I'm like, I need to go take a phone call. And I talked to you in the back of the office. And I remember the symptoms that you had. And now you're a symptom-free. That is absolutely wonderful. And thank you. Thank you for sharing that. It's amazing. People just need a little bit of information. And hopefully in this group, you guys are finding all the information that you need to get started, to go all the way. You can use all the information in the group. You can use coaching services. You can use the group coaching. There's so many resources in here. If you get overwhelmed with all the resources and what's best for you, book a free consultation with me. Book a free consultation with me. And if you can't find where that link is, send me a message, a private message. Be like, hey, I need a free consultation. Or where's the link? And I will send it to you. There's no reason why anybody has to be sick when we have this information out here. And what you're seeing now is that the medical industry is finally catching on that the Epstein-Barr virus is responsible for autoimmune symptoms. I'm not even going to say diseases because it's not a disease. There's no such thing as an autoimmune disease. Your body does not attack itself. Your poor immune system has been shamed for decades saying that it's attacking itself when it's not. It's, a, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. It's attacking a virus. So I'm hoping this video is going to set the groundwork and give you some inspiration as to, oh, this, this really isn't that hard. I can do this. Now, if you still want more support, like I said, once I deliver this guy and I can breathe again, <laughs> it doesn't matter if I'm talking or not talking. I'm just, I'm out of breath all the time. And he. I went to the OB today. He's down. He's down low. Like he's where he's supposed to be. So she's like, you must be breathing better. I'm like, no, I'm not tall enough for this. <laughs> There's no room in here. So anyway, so that's why I'm over. I'm um, out of, out of breath. So once this guy starts to sleep, I'm going to give him March, right? Maybe some of April, but I'm hoping to have him on a schedule by then sleep schedule. So then I'm, I'm back on track. I'm going to do another workshop and I'm going to open up my four month healing protocol called path to healing. That's my four month program where I will take you step by step by step. And by the end of the four months, you will have all the tools that you need to heal your body. Now, I am not saying that you're going to be healed in four months. Yes, some people do heal in four months, but we don't know. We can never guarantee. But what I can guarantee is that you will have the tools that you need to heal your body. So right now, visual learner here, this is how I look at it. Right now you're in a forest. It's dark. You don't know which way to go. You know that healing is on the other side of that forest, but you don't know which way is out. So you go right, then you go left, then you go right. And you're like, all right, is this working? I'm not sure if this is working. What I do in the four months, I go, okay, ready? We're going to take three steps this way. You good? You got that? Okay, perfect. Now we're going to take four steps this way. And I clear the path so that you can see exactly your way out of the woods. You can see exactly where you need to go and what you need to do. And then you're like, 
I'm good, Janine. I'm, I don't need you anymore. I can see exactly where I need to go. Not only can I see it, but I have the energy to do it. I have the energy to get there. So that's going to be in April. I don't know if it's going to be the beginning of April or the end of April. I'm honestly, I don't know. Well, my first one didn't sleep at all, kid. My second child, um, she slept great because I put her on a schedule and that was 15 years ago. So I'm reading all the books and I'm getting prepared and I really want to bring you guys that program again in April uh, because it's amazing. The last time I did it was in August and I have a group of clients right now and it's the, the sense of community that everyone gets from each other, the healing that is going on, just the education, the support. It, it really is quite amazing and I can't wait till I can do this. Um, not pregnant. <laughs> so anyway, so that's going to be in um, April, sometime in April. I'll keep you guys posted. But for now, uh, let me just say, Okay. All right. Awesome. I'm good. All right. Perfect. I think I covered everything. The only thing that I did want to say is I don't ever talk about um, drugs, um, disease modifying drugs. I was on them, them. I was on the beta serone and I took beta serone for a year and it kept getting worse. At the end of that year is when I was paralyzed in my arms and in my legs. I decided to get off of it and take matters into my own hands. I learned a lot from that experience. Everyone gets an exacerbation when they get off their medication. And there's a whole host of reasons why what happens inside your body. Now I understand that it's inevitable. Yes, there is a way to do it. I can't coach you on that. That has to be your decision. So because I'm not a licensed professional in any way, I'm just somebody who healed their symptoms and I'm offering coaching services to you. I can't tell you to get off your medication. But what I can tell you is my experience with myself and with the clients that I've worked with. When you are on disease modifying drugs, you will heal to a point. And then what happens is the healing stops. Most of those disease modifying drugs, whether they're infusions or not, they kill the body's ability to make antibodies. What happened was the medical industry saw a correlation between MS patients um, and other people. MS patients have very high level of antibodies, but they don't know why. Other people do not. People with autoimmune diseases have very high levels of antibodies. Other people, healthy people do not. So what they thought was, they're like, oh, well, let's kill the body's ability to make antibodies. That should do it. It didn't do it, actually. No one is healing from the disease-modifying drugs. They say it stops it in its tracks, but what it's doing is it's actually killing the body's ability to fight the virus. So your body is being dampened and your body is not able to perform the way it should, which is why this protocol requires your body, requires you to utilize the resources that your body has, like the detoxing process of your liver, the... Um, pathogen fighting abilities of your immune system. Maybe next week we'll talk about the free radicals because that's pretty important. Oh, what are we doing next week? Actually, the last next week's Live at Five is Matt Rowe. He is back by popular demand. A um, lot of requests for him. So I was just able to nail him down for the 26th. So the Live at Five on the 26th is going to be Matt Rowe. He's going to be talking about um, your beliefs and why you absolutely can do it. It you'll see what we're talking about. Okay, everybody. Um, I think I did all the announcements during this. If you ever want to know what's going on in the group, what's free, what are your resources, go to the file section and look for the calendar. In that calendar is going to be, um, it's live. So you, you go to the day, you see the event, and then you can click on it. And then that will take you over to where you can register for that event. Utilize the resources in this group. There are so many of them. I try to really flood you guys with all the information that you need to start healing right away. In my workshop, I actually give you module one of the Path to Healing Protocol so that you can see how quickly the body responds and how quickly you can get rid of that brain fog and start getting some of that energy that you need to keep going. So um, I think that's it. Um, I did want to give a quick shout out to Anne. Um, Anne has been working with her boyfriend, Tom, now for months since my first workshop in August. And I remember her asking me, how long is this going to take? I've been doing this for a couple of weeks with him and I don't see any differences. And I always, 
feel terrible because I want to give people answers. I want to say, well, it's going to take X amount of time. Keep going. But I can't. I can't because everyone's different. And so she started this in August. Tom's the one with MS, um, but she takes care of him and cooks everything. And he does what, what she says. It's, it's really a lovely relationship. And he's just now starting to heal and start st to feel like things are working again. Like he's, he's over the hump and now the healing has started. So there have been people in my, in my four month group and that they healed right away. They healed within four months, drop foot, brain fog, you name it, they had it except for paralysis. Um, and they've healed all of their symptoms. So I don't know what it depends on because we can't unzip your body and see what's going on on the inside. But what we can absolutely guarantee is that you're going to get all the tools that you need. And most of those tools, if not all of them can be found in this group. So um, please keep doing exactly what you're doing. This group is amazing. The amount of support and love, everything that everyone provides for each other in this group is exactly what we need out in the world. And the difference between this group and the other MS groups that I've been in is amazing. You guys aren't victims. None of you are. You're all about, okay, what can we do? What works? I've tried this. Did you try that? Oh, you're down today? Let me lift you up because I was down the other day and I needed lifting up. I know how, what you're going through. Let's do this together. So I just wanted to thank everybody for the amazing support that I see all of you give each other. Um, I could live in this group. I could be on Facebook all day, every day. It's it's a really, it's a really good feeling. Um, and I hope you guys are enjoying it too. The only thing that I ask of you is to keep spreading the word. When you are talking to people, let them know that, hey, there's this, there's this crazy chick on Facebook. She healed herself like it is possible. I've seen other people do it. Talk about it. Just start talking about it. Start connecting with people. If you don't want to send them over to me, fine. Send them somewhere. Just give them some information because you guys are the ones, I'm, I swear, you're like the 1% of people who t don't take no for an answer. You know, you're like, you're like me, like the doctor's like, oh, you don't have any choices. I'm sorry. You're going to be in a wheelchair, Janine. Just be, be happy. Nobody dies of MS. I'm like, what? I have two little kids. I want, I want, I want to raise them. So that's what I find that I feel like everybody in this group, like I haven't had to block anybody. Everybody's amazing in this group. Just, I ask that you please spread the information and let people know that it is possible to heal. Um, there is support and there is a community out there for them. And let's just keep that ball rolling. Because like I said, the medical industry, they are just about to go mainstream with Epstein-Barr and MS or autoimmune diseases. They're just about to make autoimmune diseases a thing of the past. Like we don't have to suffer with this. We just have to kill the virus. Just like we've been dealing with this COVID shit for how long? Oh, sorry, but we've been dealing with this for so long. We should have been dealing with the Epstein-Barr virus decades ago, but instead they shamed our bodies and said our bodies were attacking itself. And that was never the case. And we're proving that over and over again, as e as everybody begins to heal, as everybody goes, hmm, I wonder if there's anything to that crazy EBV chick on, on that Facebook group, you know, and they, they start to try it and then they start to heal. So keep spreading the word. All right. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to start putting more stuff in the group. I'll put some links in here. If you're watching the replay later, because this was on five o'clock Wednesday, the 19th of January, I keep calling this month February. Um, if you're watching the replay, still comment and ask questions because I still get notified and I can still answer them um, or do a little video for you if, if it's more involved. But okay, I'm going to go make dinner. I'm starving. It was great to talk to you guys. I absolutely love this. Um, Suzanne, wait, I have to read this. That looks really good. Suzanne says, this group has given me support with what's happening in my life. Suzanne, isn't it amazing? There are so many good people. So everyone is amazing in this group. So keep posting, keep supporting, keep adding to the content, different modalities. I never want anyone to think, oh, well, you know, Janine doesn't talk about this modality, so I'm not going to post it. Post everything so that everyone can decide for themselves if it's for them. And join me um, in February on Thursdays, because I'd love to see you guys on Zoom face to face rather than like these little names that are just like scrolling on past me. All right, everyone. Um, you have a great night. And today's Wednesday. I will see you next week with Matt Rowe, five o'clock live at five next week. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.